welcome to Seoul. We are now on our way to catch a train to this famous palace here in Korea called Cheongbokong. <laughs> we're definitely going to be mispronouncing everything. Yeah. So we're walking here throughout the Gangnam district. Wopan Gangnam Star. Not too far away from our Airbnb. And something that we've noticed is it seems to be very kind of, what is it, we're like, business oriented or like a business district yeah I people think. dress really well it's a lot more like grays blacks at least i'm noticing you know a lot of the men very professional very more kind of traditional in the yeah. american sense of business and looks very nice and we see the word like bank and finance everywhere. like everywhere and something else that we see everywhere it's is coffee, coffee shops, shops everywhere yeah, it's like Ev five in a stretch of block and then yeah, like, another five on yeah, the other side it's crazy there's so many so yeah. it seems that south koreans really like their coffee i kind of expected like in south korea to be a lot more like tea oriented maybe because of japan or china yeah you know not that it should be but just kind of a stereotype i guess i was thinking in my mind and it seems that coffee here is way more yeah. popular than tea which yeah. is very interesting so it seems a bit more westernized they're very very some similarities to America that I've seen, which are really kind of interesting. Now let's grab some caffeine. We're here at one of the most popular coffee shops that we've seen so far. And what I really like is that you can order right here. Then let's see, to go, let's do a green tea latte. You can do hot or ice. We'll do hot. I'm gonna do this one. This seems yummy. Okay, so also hot, less syrup, and okay. And you can go ahead and pay right here too. Mint. That was super fast. Okay. Yay! Now we wait for our coffee. to navigate the Seoul Metro. You know, like we heard that it was a little bit complicated or you could get lost, but all of the stations have the name in English. You know, the lines have the numbers and the colors that really help with the map. So we thought it was pretty easy and pretty cheap as well. And as soon as you come off the Metro station, you can already see to your right, the Cheongbongkong Plaza and we wanted to make sure to see both the modern and the traditional side of Seoul so we're very excited to explore this traditional landmark so let's go and something else that is so cool here is right across from the palace there are all of these different little stores where you can rent traditional Korean outfits and kind of experience tradition on another level and today Ali and I won't be doing it because we plan to be doing this later this week when we visit the traditional Korean village and we'll be linking that video in the description section below if you're interested. This is a much larger complex than I was expecting. Yeah. It was built in 1395, so a lot older than I thought too. Oh yeah. And when we arrived, we were able to catch the ending of the changing of the guard ceremony. And you can watch that 
pretty much every day at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So highly recommend. And to hang out in the, in the front of the plaza is completely free. But yes. if you want to come inside and see all of the halls and palaces and everything that we're seeing right now, then you do need to buy a ticket, which costs two dollars and twenty twenty cents. <laughs> Something else is just so cool is we've been walking here, you know, courtyard after courtyard, all of these beautiful historic buildings, almost on every side, surrounded by you know modern buildings and skyscrapers. So yeah. it's just so cool that Korea has really kind of preserved their history, in, in my opinion, really, really well. And it's amazing to see because obviously before coming here. One of the kind of stereotypes is that South Korea is the most, if not one of the most westernized countries in East Asia. Obviously we've seen a little bit of that more in the city, but I love seeing them really preserving their culture because of course they have such a rich, beautiful culture that we're kind of learning about. And now we're gonna head off to our next destination, so let's go. We're here at the very beginning of the Cheonggicheong stream. And this is an urban public space and it's one of the several projects from the city of Seoul to create more you know, public areas and more eco-friendly spaces you know, among this very urban and busy city. It is almost seven miles long, so we better get started. Wanjong Market, which is Seoul's largest traditional market, and apparently 65,000 people pass through this market yeah. every single day. There's over 5,000 shops, and as you can tell, yeah, it's lively, uh, it's a little bit cramped. Yeah, and we're on a mission to try some delicious Korean cuisine. <laughs> if you don't like seeing live fish that are about to get slaughtered, then look away. I don't even know what this is, but this is crazy. They got octopus, flounder. You can kind of see that in there. I've never seen one of these. Yeah. Person. Huge fish. And then over there we have the eels. I've never seen seafood like this all in one place. That's crazy. I have no idea what this is. So if you know what I'm about to eat, make sure to comment below. Let's see if it's good. Oh, it's sweet. I thought it was gonna be more like garlic bread or something, but it's like a cake or a donut. It's really good. Right. Mm. Mm. Egg. There's a whole egg in there. Oh, you cut the egg. I didn't yeah, it's like a raw, no, not raw, but full egg in there. Look, it's like a yellow cake with egg inside. It's very good. We decided to sit down in one of the little restaurants that are within the market and what we got here to eat was some beef soup, some sides, bean sprouts, a mystery broth, <laughs> some kimchi, rice, and this side here that we see everywhere but we don't know the name. And we also got probably one of the most popular dishes here in Korea which is bibimbap. And if you go to a Korean restaurant and you're trying to figure out if they forgot to give you silverware, actually, it's right here. Something else that we've noticed, and this is totally our opinion because I know it could offend some people, and that is I found it hard to find food that I like here in Seoul, like never before. I've had Chinese food, Japanese food, we've been in Thailand, uh, even in Bali, and found really good food everywhere. But we found it very difficult here, even in Gangnam, near our Place. and even here in the market going through a lot of places this really looked the best and we came in and as soon as I kind of got it and then kind of smelling it here now this kind of beef soup literally smells rancid it smells not good but I'm still gonna give it a try and a lot of the foods that we've seen here in the market it's kind of like the same foods repeated over and over not like a huge diversity of all these different kinds but kind of like the same types of I guess you know soups and, and rice and noodles I'm just gonna try a little mushroom out of here baby steps baby Mm 
It's good. It's actually pretty good. Spicy. I like that spiciness. It still smells really bad coming in, but it's good. I'll give you a couple more bites. All right, my turn. It's pretty good. It's not as flavorful as I expected, but I like the combination of the ingredients. Maybe I just have to add a little bit more of this sauce. Now, to put a, put a nice final taste in our mouth, we are here at White Button, which is this Korean ice cream or shaved ice franchise right outside of uh, the market. And what we got specifically is some Oreo shaved ice. So you have the shaved ice at the bottom, then you have some different toppings. In this case, like some Oreo, uh, it's kind of sweet in there. I also got a little bit of jasmine tea, because if you know me, I love tea. So we're gonna kind of sample this a little bit, enjoy it, and then head off to our next destination. There we go. Oh, that's very, it tastes just like, like a Oreo ice cream. Yeah, this is really good. We prefer to usually get the metro to go to our destination, but when we're in a hurry, we would rather take a taxi because there's no Uber here in Seoul. There is this app called Cacao Tea. However, we weren't able to add our own credit cards and debit cards, it wasn't really accepting. So we just went and hailed a taxi and it seems like they accept card and cash. So it's good to go and I think it's gonna be pretty inexpensive as well. This is where our taxi driver dropped us off. And this, <laughs> after 600 steps, is where we ended up by the N Seoul Tower, one of the most iconic landmarks here in Seoul, and also a beautiful view of the city. I will say, as you can see, it is a bit hazy due to all the pollution from China, because apparently, no, this is true. That's what we heard. Yeah, this is what we heard, is that apparently, in the winter months especially, there's heavy, heavy smog and pollution here, so maybe not the best time to visit for the views here in Seoul, but still really beautiful. I'm making 16,000 string. Wow. Can you believe? Wow. Let me show you. One, two, ni, yon, po, ei, hachi, juroku. 16, sanjuni, 32, lokuju yon, 64, 128, hakuni juaji. 256, Niaku Goju Roku, 512, Koaku Juni, Sen Niju Yon, 1024, Chajaza, Mada Mada, Keep going, Yisen, 2000, Yonsen, 4000, Hassan, 8000, Last 16,000, String. Saigua, Ichimang, Luxembourg, no, Wow, jeez. Oh my god, oh my god. Nakawa, Amond to Pinachu, Erete, Kururururu. Chajajam, Mukashi, Osama no, Kashi. We're now here in Insadong Street, which is this famous street with a lot of different art and shops. Just arrived here and we are at our first stop and kind of see behind us at this awesome guy who makes Korean taffy. Fills it with different ingredients like it could be chocolate, almonds, or peanuts. And what we have here is almond, which he said is one of the most popular, which you're really excited to try. It actually looks like a little caterpillar. Look at that. I can see some of it falling off, so give it a try. It looks kind of dry though, so let's see. Super sweet, a little bit dry, like right off the bat. As you chew it, though, it becomes like melts in your mouth. This is really good. I like this a lot. This reminds me of Zagnut, which is an older kind of dessert in the U.S. that I used to eat when I was younger that I really like. Kind of like um, like um, I forgot what it's called. Nutmeg is what it kind of tastes like, but um. Really good, kind of see the inside there. 10 out of 10. <laughs> so 
So Nur Singh, his college roommate from Korea for the first time since what, 2017? Yeah. <laughs> he brought us to one of his uh, favorite restaurants trying some traditional Korean food that you cannot find in the US or anywhere else. Hoopchuk? Yeah, Hoopchuk. Hoopchuk. Hoop yeah. You can kind of see here, which is like cow intestine, looks like some different, um, like, what is it, onion? Yeah, onions and green onions. That looks really good and it smells great. First, you just take some here, then dip and taste test. A little bit hot, huh? Mm -hmm. Super tasty. Yeah. Cheers! So we just asked Weijong about this garlic here. Apparently it's somewhat common to eat this like totally raw or you can kind of barbecue it a little bit and then eat it, which is really cool. Now it looks like Weijong is mixing some soju with some of this beer for a special little uh, drink. Yeah. Make sure you give it a good mix with your chopstick. With your chopstick. <laughs> and now you try. Let's grab a drink. I can say she drinks before you go home. Sure. John. Wow. So here is a fish cake which Ali just got a little piece, and apparently it's super common in Busan, where we're actually going next, so I was gonna give it a try. <laughs> and today is our last day here in Seoul, so I wanted to give you kind of one final review of our first impressions of this city. So Ali, why don't you go first? Okay. Well, Seoul was definitely different than I expected. And by the way, we haven't really talked to each other about what we're gonna say. Yeah, so this is my so raw, true yeah. opinion. It's different than I expected. I mean, we always try, or I always try to not really carry the ideas or the expectations whenever we go to a new place. But I did have higher expectation on certain levels about Seoul. So, it's a little bit more dead than I thought. Like it's um, maybe uh, people here in Seoul are very private to themselves. Even though you see them walking in groups and laughing and whatever, but they seem to be always on their phones. Um, so difficult to like interact. But once they did talk to us, they were so outgoing, so nice. Yeah, very polite too. I very noticed. polite. So, very polite yeah, so yeah, all of Seoul and everywhere that we went, they're extremely polite to you. Things are very clean. It was a lot easier to navigate Seoul than I expected. A lot more English friendly. Yeah, I would say the metro system was great. You could get anywhere in Seoul well, with the metro. 100% recommend the so, metro yeah, system. So yeah, their metro transport specifically <laughs> is amazing. I also thought one thing that was kind of difficult for me, we like to explore usually in the mornings, but Seoul is definitely a night city. Like you can tell. People are drinking. So first of all, like we mentioned before, right? All of the coffee places. Yes. Like people are drinking coffee at like 10, 10 p.m. PM. 9 p.m. yeah which, which for me is crazy you know because <laughs> and it's also just not healthy from a biological standpoint <laughs> like period it's uh, yeah but yeah we it's were crazy. like so impressed by that and like things don't open a lot of times until 9 or 10 a.m. Yeah. so it's so dead in the morning yes so it was very different the food to me was a bit disappointing because we had wonderful amazing Korean food in the US on yeah a couple occasions yeah on yeah. a couple occasions so it was like oh my gosh this is really gonna be amazing and we tried a few different things that was like yeah we, yeah, it, was and good. it wasn't just the food that we ate in this vlog because it's like oh you eat two meals and it wasn't right good, so therefore yeah. the entire city no throughout the two weeks that we stayed here every day every eating day Korean eating food. out one last thing that I really liked was to see the mix of the modern with the traditional like sure. it was really nice going to the palace or even as uh, we later went to Bukchon village. village, which we really liked. So it was really nice seeing that integration. And you can kind of totally. see the differences between like the younger generation and older generation too. So overall, 
it, it, honestly, I'm so glad we came. Definitely. Like, I'm very, very happy. It's and that's why we travel. We to see different places to experience these different cultures. And if you want to see the more traditional side of Seoul, be sure to watch this video right here. Our day vlog in Bokchon Hanok traditional village, which we had so much fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this adventure, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye. bye.